Hello Patch fans. So what we got today? Uh, today is the first project on this car since owning it the second time. Obviously I've done a heap the first time um, but since getting it back we're going to do the body lift. I will put a link in the description as to where I bought the body lift kit from. Place in the UK. Uh, they do some very good kits. Uh, but this is basically what the car looks like at the minute. We've got two inch body lift to go in it. So before we start a job like this, uh, we need to assess what, what we're looking at. So first we'll start by locating where the actual body blocks are. There's eight on each side. Eight, six, I can't remember. We'll count them as we go. So the first one is right there. That's relatively easy to get to. Um, the bolt, we take, take this out. Uh, there's access to the bolt down there and then obviously same on this side so that's the first one second one moving along second one is right there so that sits about there so we're gonna have to pull the carpet up um, access will be around about there for that one so the third one is right there so that's in a tricky spot the third one so that's gonna be somewhere around there so we're gonna have to pull all these trims out we don't have to take the carpet out we'll just move the carpet inwards out of the way so that's the third one um fourth one right there so that's actually easy to get to there's actually a cut out here when you take the carpet you just get that one down there it's fourth one fifth one uh, where are we all right so the fifth one is right there now on this car unfortunately i'm going to have to pull the drawers out um this side is accessible it's under that grommet there this side however um is where i've got my battery and i can't get my battery out without taking this off i can't get that off without taking all this off so I can probably leave the draw frames in, um, but all this has to come out, so I've got a bit of work there. Oh, sorry, so what are we up to? Is that five? I've lost count. And then this here, in there, is where the six one is. So there's six either side, 12 all up. And that is just up there. So 12 all up. Um, other things we need to consider is the gear levers obviously the body's coming up so the gear levers are going to sink effectively on a manual you got a bit more work to do on an auto not too bad because this is cable operated and um, the kit i've bought actually comes with a two inch extender for the transfer lever there's also some wiring under here which goes through the body so we'll have to pull the grommet for that and possibly retake that wiring at a different position that's not too difficult uh, other things to consider we've got brake lines here these are these are quite good they're coiled up inside there so you can literally just pull pull them through um what else we got so the steering column shaft hard to see down there possibly um undo the clamp where it's splined we might have to slide it back a little bit on the splines there to give us a bit more room i found with one inch body lift that's not an issue with two it possibly might be um heater lines with two inch body lift i remember on my shorty i had a drama with heater lines now this has actually had the heater core bypass because it's leaking so no issue there i do plan on fixing that when i can be bothered and the last thing uh, which is very important is Obviously when you're lifting the body, the radiator comes up with the body, which means the fan shroud comes up with the body, but the fan is on the engine, so the fan stays there. 
so you need to modify this fan shroud don't take it off it works way better with the fan shroud on um, but we will have to modify it if you're really keen um, you can actually relocate the um, radiator lower that down in line um, obviously that would be the, the best thing to do but it's just way more work when I've done body lift before I've managed to get away with not doing that and I've not had any dramas so I think that's everything covered um, obviously as we go through and uh, we're actually doing the job I might find some more things but yeah that's what we're tackling today all right so I've got the center console out um, and this rubber grommet here and this wiring that comes down here this is the bit that we need to modify because um, as the body comes up then it's going to pull this wiring up with it and it's going to pull tight so what we need to do is we need to untape this here um, so the wiring can actually pull through the grommet and then when the body lift is done we need to retape this now this is not very accessible normally um, it's covered by carpet now what I've done is I've just trimmed, so the carpet came across here like that. I've just trimmed it. I remember on the first body lift that I did, I actually cut this section completely out. It made it real easy to get to this. Um, but then you have problems with this not, not fitting right. Like this can come untucked and look unsightly. So leave a little strip there to actually hold your carpet inwards on both sides. Um, and then basically, yeah, move this out of the way, untape that wiring, unhook it from this little clip here, and then the whole wiring can go through the grommet. All right, just another little tip. So this wiring that runs over the top, um, that's just clipped in to these little metal brackets there and there. Just pop the front clip out, and then you can move that over there out of the way and heaps of room to work there now so we're just going to untape that all right so just to make this a bit easier um, unplug the plug right there pop the grommet out take the tape off and then you can literally just pull that upwards I, I can't do that because I've got the camera in one hand but basically yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to slide that up um, there is a bit of play there um, so if you're doing say a two inch body lift you probably only need to move that an inch if you're doing a one inch body lift I reckon you'll get away without without doing this um, but it's little little handy tips that you can know so I'm just going to slide that up not tape it up yet until the car's all back together all right we'll address the transfer lever as well while we're here um, the manual gearbox is not such an issue but the transfer obviously on the manual the transfer is on that side um, the problem you have when you put body lift is obviously this bit here is coming higher and what can happen is where your center console is you cannot get two-wheel drive so sometimes you have to notch the console out um, we'll see how we go on this one but what I am going to do is I'm going to pull this um, rubber boot out lift it out of the way just so that once we've done the body lift we can address exactly what we need to do here all right so on my nl automatic i'm actually quite pleased that the top of the transfer box is incredibly close to the body um, so once we've lifted this body two inches we may not have an issue with um, selecting two-wheel drive but we'll see when we get it all back together all right so i've gained access to all of them now so rubber grommet out of here um there's one in there rubber grommet out of here one in there that's two third one is here and seeing all this wiring can be daunting basically just pull the plastic out and then the wiring is just tucked out of the way there's one next one under there one in there 
and then at the front you just pull the um, expansion bottle out this one's tricky um, right down there there's some silver tape if you pull that silver tape off that'll give you access to that one and then on this side on the petrol I don't think this is on the diesel need to pull this little plastic thing out just push it that way pull it out and then we've got access to all of them um, now bumpers so if you're going to do a one inch body lift you can kind of get away with not relocating the bumpers a one inch gap doesn't look unsightly however on a two inch body lift um, if you don't relocate your bumpers they're going to sit two inch lower you're going to have a big gap and it's going to look crap so I am going to pull my bumpers off for this uh, the kit that I've got has rear bumper relocators you can option it to get the front bumper relocators however because I got my ARB winch bar going on uh, I'm actually going to re-weld my original bumper mounts going to strengthen them up and mount them two inch higher as I've done on my previous cars all right so I've taken these little silver covers off and they weren't sealed and because they weren't sealed that in there is absolutely chocked full of dirt so I'm gonna have to smash all that up then get the airline and try and blow it out all right let's see if we can get in there and see um, so I just broke all that up it was a lot of like stones and sand and dirt all compacted I've just gone in there with the air blower, uh, blown all the crap out, and now that's accessible. So the bolts that are in there have like a little, um, I don't know how to explain it, they have like a little bracket coming off the side of them, they're not a bolt as such, they're the ones where they'll turn so far and then wedge up against the body and either tighten or untighten. So they're very easy to get undone. Uh, when we do the body lift, however, and we're changing that for a bolt, we do need to try and get some kind of socket in there to hold it while, we, while we're tying it up. Uh, so taking it out is easy. Um, putting it all back together a bit more tricky. But we'll see how we go. So I've just sprayed all the um, underside of the bolts and nuts in penetrating oil. Uh, I'm going to start undoing them in a minute. Um, well, I'm going to do the bottom half of the fan shroud first, but I just had a thought, something that totally missed. Um, if you have this style of tow bar, then obviously when you want to lift the rear bumper, um, this becomes an issue. So what I've done on my previous ones is I've cut down there, cut down there, and then when the bumper's moved up, um... I mean, it's not ideal, it doesn't look perfect, um, but you can run a little strip, rubber strip on each side or something. But yeah, obviously once the bumper comes up, that becomes an issue there. So that's something I'll tackle when I um, relocate this bumper. All right, so we're gonna take this lower section of the fan shroud out. Um, sometimes you can get away with just doing that. Looking at this fan shroud, I think that may be enough. On the diesel one, um, I did have to trim a little bit of this back section. Um, so, I think this just slides out from memory. It's been a while since I've done one. Okay, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Alright, I think it might have like a barb type clip in there. Um, I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand, so I'm going to put the camera down and pull that out. Alright, so these ends are just a push fit. So basically how it works is that pushes up at one side, that pushes up at the other side, and then it's retained by one clip there. Um, that just sits in and one clip there so basically what you do is unclip that unclip that 
and then the whole thing can just pull out. What now? Mr. Popular. No, just kidding, it was just an alarm. All right, so now that the lower section's off, you can see that as this bit goes upwards, it will actually clear the fan. Um, with that in, obviously it would be hard up against the fan and you'd either damage the fan or just smash the crap out of this. So looking at that, I think once that's raised up two inches, we should have no dramas. If for whatever reason the fan happens to just catch, because this, this is not a great fit at the bottom, if it happens to catch here, what I'll do is I'll just trim, trim around this lip. All right, so I've just gone round to start taking all the nuts off the bottom. Um, and yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these. So the type of bolt that I was trying to describe before, see it's got like the little bracket on. It's hard to see, there's no light in there. Um, these ones under the grommets here, because they're easily accessible, they're actually not that style. They're just a normal bolt. So for this one and the one in the driver's and passenger front footwell, you will need to put a 14mm socket on there. All right, so now I've got the nuts off of all of them. We need to get the bolts out. Now, all of them are relatively easy to get out, except this front one, because it's all the way down there. So if you have a telescopic magnet, this is the time to use it. If not, then I hope you've got some really long pointy fingers. Let me just get a light. So there's all the dirt in there still, but what we're probably going to have to do in order to get that out is rotate it around um, in order to get the, the bolt out because it's got the little arm, the little bracket on there. So again, I'm probably not going to be able to film this, so I'm just going to put the camera down and see if I can get that out. Alright, so I've just come to remove this bolt. Um, proving very tricky. I don't remember this being an issue on the last one. Um, I'm thinking this may have been put in 180, because it's going up and it's just hitting something. It needs to be spun round. So what I've done is I took this rubber out and then I took the metal sleeve out that sits between the rubbers and that's given me a heap more movement but it still won't come out. So I think what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to wait till the body's actually jacked up ready to put the block in and then try and negotiate that out. Because uh, like I say, the ones I've done before have just pushed straight up, but this one, the arm's facing backwards and hitting against the chassis. I think it's meant to be facing forwards. So Mitsubishi, you may have stuffed up there. Let's see what the other side's like. Alright, so I'm going to show you a little trick for this back one. So I've taken the bottom rubber off to give me a bit more movement. Um, and what you need to do is if you try and get this up through the hole, not going to happen. So you need to put it up inside the body. Like so. And then you can work it out. Out through the hole, like so. So I've just loosened off the steering column shaft bolt down there. Um, that's an easy thing to forget about when you've put everything back together. So I'm a note writer. I always write myself notes to remind myself. So we're at the point now, which is the, not the trickiest, but the scariest point, I guess. It's like cutting a hole in your guard when you're fitting a snorkel. Uh, we need to actually jack the body up now in order to get the blocks in. Now, I probably shouldn't have taken the bolts all out because if the body happens to shift sideways, then, well, we're stuffed because we're not going to line it up. So I will probably put some of them back in. Um, the reason I've pulled them all out is so we can line them up and compare. Um, they're all 
pretty much the same size. For some reason the rear one is pointed. I don't know whether that's difficult to get in so they've put a point on it. Um, and the front one's still in the car, obviously, because that's the one we were struggling with. Um, so, I'm going to go get the new kit and see what we've got. Alright, so we've got something here all the way from the UK, just like me. <laughs> so, we've got some bumper relocation plates and bolts. Um, I said the front was an option. I was wrong. You get the front automatically. It's the um, gear lever and transfer lever bits that are optional. So, got some spares. Set of bolts. Transfer lever extender. And 12 body blocks. All right, so you can see the difference in length of the bolt, obviously two inch longer. Um, so what I'll probably do is I'll probably sit all these in the holes where I took them ones from. Um, and then obviously as I go around and put the blocks in, I'll just pull them out one at a time, uh, put the block in, put them back in. That way we won't get any shift of the body because um, it'll still have all the bolts in. All right, because these are longer. Um, these ones here need a little bit of persuasion. There we go. So I'm going to jack the car up now. Um, if you have side skirts off and bumpers off, it gives you a heap more opportunities to wear to jack. Um, previously I've had the bumper off and I've used the high lift jack under the body at the front, which has worked a treat. If you're going to use a high lift jack, just be aware that they're very unstable. I've had my car fall off of a high lift jack numerous times. Um, if you're expecting it, it's fine. If you're not expecting it, you could probably end up with a serious injury. Um, today, I'm going to jack under the side step here. I wouldn't actually recommend this. Um, anyone that's off-roaded an NL hard will know these side steps are weak as piss. Um, these are coming off because I've actually got rock sliders, custom made rock sliders to go on. So I don't really care if I bend these. So I've just got the jack under the support bracket there, which is mounted direct to the body. So I'm going to jack up and see how we go. All right, I've jacked it up a little bit and I just remembered about these. So I've just pulled the grommet out. I've pulled this out. Um, as we can see, we've got a bit of a funny angle there. But as the body goes up, we can then work on shaping that and straightening it and then pop that back in when we're done so i got the front jacked well i got the side this whole side jacked up a fair bit um and on the front here if we pop this out um then we've got heaps of movement there i should be able to get that bolt out um, again it's one of them jobs that i need two heads so i'm going to put the camera down now all right, so you actually have to jack it pretty damn high to get this front one in because of the design of this here, how it's kind of recessed. So what I've done is I've set the rubber in there, taken the washer out. You can get the body block up into there and then slide the metal in after. Then we can get the bolt in, get the knot on. We won't tighten it up. And then that's the first one done. All right, so that's in. A um, little bit of a tip. If you're doing the body a side at a time, like I am, what happens is when you jack it up, it puts the body on an angle. So getting that bolt through, because you've got the hole in the body, plus the block, plus the washer, plus the rubber, um, you have to kind of make it go on a bit of an angle. What I did was, and if you've got two people, this will be a lot easier. I put a bolt up through there to sort of line it all up and then I put the bolt in with it partially lined up and then you basically just got to move all this around while the bolt goes in. So if you've got someone to push the bolt while well, you just wiggle this around until you get it out the bottom. So we'll move on to the next one now. Um, I probably don't need to film the rest of this. Um, if I come across any dramas along the way I will let you know but I'm just going to proceed to put all these in. I reckon I might get this one 
and that one at most. And then I'll probably have to move the jack to the back of the car to do the rest. So I totally failed to notice this when I took it out. Um, but that's the front one. That's why it was so tricky to get out. I'm not sure why they've made it like that. One of them would have worked just fine so that it turns and locks up. All that bit does is mean it won't come upwards unless it's on a stupid angle. But anyway, it's out now. All right, so I've just come to put this one in here. Um, jacking the car up there, because there's not a lot of weight on the back of the car, um, it's actually sort of taken the chassis with it a bit. I really struggled to make room to get that in. So what I did was I got a pry bar between the chassis and the body and basically just prized it up enough to wedge that in there. That's literally just wedged in. So I'm going to have to knock that into place um, and get the, the bolt in there. So based on the fact that I just got that one in, um, unless I find somewhere to jack the rear of the car up, I'm going to struggle with them. So I think I'm going to start on the other side, working front to back. Um, by the time I get to here, I will have how many? Eight, eight out of the 12 in, and the last four at the back should be relatively easy. Jeez, you don't look so good, mate. Big night on the town last night. Something to know on this side, um, because you have to jack the front up relatively high, in order to get that one in. So I've probably gone an inch higher than I needed to in order to get that in. And um, this earth wire was tight, that's fine. That's a good strong wire. Where that fastens down there, I literally just pulled it a little bit and now that's slack. However, the AC compressor wiring, it kind of hooks under the port there. Um, whether it's meant to hook under the port or not, I'm not sure. If yours is over the top, you'll be fine. Because mine's hooked under, that wire has gone very tight. Tight, excuse me. So hopefully my AC still works. If not, I'll have to follow that wire up to the top and see if I've actually damaged it. Um, but yeah, maybe just check this before you jack it up. That's if you've watched the full video before getting this far. And then maybe just move that wire around the top of that part there. All right, I was just working out where I was going to jack the back up. Obviously with the bumper off, you can get under the body here. Uh, my bumper's still on, so that wasn't an option. And then a very simple idea came. Because we now have a gap between the body and the chassis, uh, I can just put a scissor jack in between the two and wind it up sufficiently to get the remaining ones in. All right, so as I've got to here, uh, I've just noticed another thing that I've actually missed. Under here, fuel filler. Now, obviously the fuel tank's stayed where it is, but the body has gone up. So that is incredibly tight now. Now, this is just held in place. I'm gonna put the camera down. This is just held in place. Oh, that's tight, with a 10 mil bracket. Sorry, a, a bracket held with a 10 mil bolt. So. Yeah, so look how tight that had pulled. That's moved up a considerable amount. So all we're gonna do is take this off and just throw it away. I don't think that pipe's gonna go anywhere. All right, so that bracket's off and that's got heaps of room now. There's this little breather, um, it's pulling a little bit tight, it's not pulling very tight. So that bracket was down like that, making that a little bit tight. Just push that bracket up, and then you've got 
heaps heaps of play there. Ow! Don't trap your finger like that. Yeah, so I think that might be the last um not drama, it's not really drama. The last thing that we didn't plan for. Um so yeah, we're getting there. So because these have a built-in washer as such, um they don't come with a washer. So when you get this there's no washer to swap over so what I've done is I've used the washers from the bumper relocator plate um, obviously because I, I only need the rear I don't need the front but if you're using both front and rear you probably will have to invest in a handful of these washers all right so body lift is in looks good all I've got to do is go around and tighten everything up um, I will show you a couple of things that we spoke about before. So, bumper, obviously not relocated. I mean, that's the wrong bumper for the car anyway. That's an NH bumper. Um, looks even more garbage than it did before. Good for the transmission cooler. Plenty of room there. But, yeah, that's that would look rubbish with a stock bumper on. Um, and the rear looks even worse because it has the the lines on the body um, that go in line with the line in the bumpers just looks stupid now and of course you've got the big gap along the back there not nice at all some people are happy to to drive around like that um, I mean it'll work exactly the same as it will higher because um, obviously the tow bar is not going to come any higher but I like it to look nice, even though it's an off-road car and it gets bashed around. I like to make it as nice as we can. So I'll probably save that for another video, doing the bumpers, um, doing the gear, uh, transfer lever, gear levers, etc. So I'll probably wrap that up there. Um, but yeah, very happy with how that sits, ready to put some 35s on it. So just to finish up. I'm just going to straighten these up, uh, pop the rubber back in. I'm going to tighten the steering column shaft up. Um, I did actually put a screwdriver in there to open, sorry, in there to open that up a bit because that was stuck solid with dirt. Um, it's probably moved back two mil. So I, I reckon you don't need to do that. Um, you can do it if you want to be on the safe side. It's literally two minutes of a job to undo that wedge a screwdriver in there to open it up a bit and then just nip it back down but like I say I've done two inch body lift and that's probably moved two mil so definitely not needed on one inch two inch I'll leave that up to you so like I say we'll sort the brake lines we'll tighten all these nuts up and then we'll call that it for this video uh, any questions just pop them in the comments but yeah I do advise watching the whole video first before tackling it and then obviously use the video as a reference while you're halfway through it thanks guys take care all right so one last thing i keep trying to end this video but because the engine is lower and i'm not lowering the radiator um the top hose is touching on this engine cover now over time that could rub through and damage the hose so i can either take this off and get rid of it altogether or let's keep it nice and neat shall we and let's just notch a section out of there just to stop that from rubbing um, everything else in the engine bay was fine obviously I've got that aircon uh, wire to sort and the heater hoses like I say they're bypassed and cable tied out the way so not an issue all right look at that looks like a factory job um, so that's that um, one last thing I keep saying one last thing but I keep finding more things uh, so the fan is just catching Let's see if we can get a shot I don't know if I can get the camera in there literally just catching down there so I'm just going to take the corner off of that, uh, we don't need to video that, I'm basically just going to get a Stanley knife and just chop the corner off of that and then we're good to go.
All right, Mother Nature has decided that's all we're doing today. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap this up and I will do a part two with all the additional bits on there, all the little fiddly bits. Baby dog, why do you always want to be in the video, eh? Why? <laughs>